Alexis, what's going on there? Hey guys, well, as Stevie would say, it is absolutely biling out here. It is like 100 degrees, and that says a lot, especially coming from a Jamaican, but it's pretty good to come out to the cool that I still haven't quite acclimatized to in London. But we're here back again at the House of Soccer, which you know that the ICC puts on every year. Last year it was LA, and it was pretty hard to top because it had the likes of Tiana Taylor and Odell Beckham Jr. But now we've got some other big names. We're waiting for that all-star match that's coming up later on around 7 p.m. local time. Heather O'Reilly, she'll be coaching one of the all-star matches or one of the all-star teams that will be playing in that match. And I also got to catch up with a certain Ray Powler. Now, you know that Paul Mariner is my number one Arsenal former man, but Ray Powler has definitely gone up in my estimation. And here's exactly what he said when I talked to him just about, you know, the other night when Arsenal managed to feel that star-studded front four with Lacazette, Aubameyang, Mesut Ozil as well, and Mkhitaryan, and if it was something that the Gunners could possibly implement in the next season. Well, I'm sure, I think they're going to play four at the back because at times last year they played three with the wing-backs uh, bombing forward. But I think he will go with a four, so they try and fit everybody into the team. Aubameyang looked very sharp the other night. I mean, he missed a really good chance. He got a big bobble in the box, but he looked very sharp running at players. Joe Willock, uh, young, young midfielder, has come into the team and he might have an opportunity this year. So it's a real opportunity for the young players, Reese Nelson, Joe Willock, all them sort of guys to put pressure on the manager to maybe put them into the uh, starting lineup. And speaking now, of course, just to touch on Mesut Ozil as well, we know exactly how destructive he can be on his day, but sometimes people would say he's a bit hot and cold in terms of the performances. What do you think is the key to bringing out the best in him consistently? Well, we know he's a, a quality player. Uh, you know, he's played in the World Cup, won the World Cup final. Um, but as you're exactly right, he, consistency is the most important thing for a footballer. You know, you, you want to see him getting out of 7 or 8 out of 10 every week. Um, so you've got to build a team around him. Um, I'm sure that... Um, MRA will be looking at well, how you play Mesut Ozil. I thought he put a lot of effort in the other night against Bayern Munich, and that's what we need to see every week. And if we can do that, we all know he's a, a very good player. And just touching on the Premier League as well, just looking at the destructive state that you saw the likes of Manchester City and Liverpool in, um, people have already started talking if this could end up looking like La Liga, where it's a bit of a two-horse yeah. race and have them going forward. Do you think the Premier League is in danger of that, or what else do the teams need to do so that it doesn't become just a race for the top four? Well, I, I certainly believe it is a two-horse race. Uh, I think Manchester City and Liverpool are too good at the moment. I think Chelsea, obviously Frank Lampard going into Chelsea, be interesting to see how he does. Hope he does really well. Uh, Manchester United, we've only got a Solskjaer bringing some players in, and you know I don't know how the, the situation there. And obviously Arsenal, Tottenham, uh, they've kept their players at the moment, so you know and, and trying to reinforce their their squads. So it's a, it's a great league, but I just still I still think Man City and Liverpool are the ones who are going to be well in front of the other the other the other pack. And I have to pick your brain on just the situation with Laurent Koscielny, of course, it's put a little bit of a, a dark cloud over it. What's your take on it and how quick, you know, we could see a resolution in this? Yeah, it's such a shame. I mean, he's, he's been such a great servant to the club. Um, we know agents are involved in most of the deals and uh, whether he's made the right decision. Um, you know, if I was a player, I would. Dip, if, you, if you're going to move anyway, you still come on tour and you sort it out when you're on tour with the manager and the people. So whether he's made the right decision not to come on tour, uh, I, maybe you regret that one day, but um, you know, politics in football, we all know it is, is so, and I don't know what's happened behind the scenes, so you know, he's a captain of the club, which is such a shame, and uh, you know, I, I just hope it's all resolved very quickly and uh, we can move on. No one's bigger than Arsenal Football Club, that is the big thing. You know, we've had some wonderful players over the years, Dennis Bergkamp, Thierry Henry, but no one's bigger than Arsenal, so you know, if, if, he, if he does move on, we, we, still, we, still go, uh, we, we still wait for the next game and carry on as a club. So you know what they say that AJ ain't nothing but a number. So I'm not going to say you were a top midfielder in your day. You still are a top <laughs> no, midfielder. I'm not too sure about that. <laughs> still are a top midfielder. But from what you've been seeing in the Premier League right now, who really excites you? Who are you excited to watch these days? Well, I thought I thought when Alden was a very good player for Liverpool last year. I think he was very underrated. I'm sure the Liverpool fans say he, he was brilliant. Um, you look at Manchester City side. You know, if you're looking for, for midfielders, who how good are they? Bernardo Silva, the the work rate when he loses the ball, the way he gets back into position. De Bruyne, who was out for a lot of, the, lot of the season, but you know how much quality he has. David Silva, another brilliant player. Uh, Ferrandino, who, who had a, a wonderful for, uh, season. So for me, it's got to be one of them. Can say obviously Chelsea is another one who stands out, but uh, for me, Bernardo Silva was, was, was the best midfielder last season in the Premier League. And finally, I have to ask you on two gentlemen that we know very well, and you probably know them quite well because you've played against them. And first one being Shaka Hislop.
And oh, I have Shaka, to ask you, yeah. how many times did you score against Shaka? Oh, I'm not too sure. He's a great goalkeeper. Hello, Shaka. How are you, mate? <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I always uh, listen to Shaka. He's, he's, a, he's a great guy. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really pleased he's doing well now for you guys. Uh, but he was a good goalkeeper. He played for lots of clubs. West Ham was his probably one he played for and Portsmouth and, and clubs like that. But uh, I'm not too sure if I scored against him. Oh, I'm sure I Shaka will be... I might have done. I don't know. I Let's be honest. Everyone scored against Shaka. <laughs> Let's move on now to another person that works for us. And it's rare to find a compliment about this man, Craig Burley. Craig knows I love him, though. I have to ask you, was he just as miserable on the pitch as he is with us in studio? Well, he, he would have been miserable on the pitch because when we played him, he was always 3-0 up, 4-0 <laughs> up. So, you know, he was... Uh, no, but Craig is a great guy as well. I mean, he had a great career at Chelsea. I'm sure he'd be looking, uh, looking at Frank Lampard now to see how well he's going to do. Uh, but on the pitch, he was great, Craig. Good on the ball and, you know, decent. Decent midfielder, uh, so yeah, nice one, Craig. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to hammer you like she said to do. So uh, yeah, he, he was a great guy. Well, you know he's Scottish, so his pockets run deep. So that <laughs> oh, yeah, means that's, that's that he will be buying right. a lot of drinks for you. To be fair, we got a lot of Scottish guys on our tour, and they don't like putting their hands in their pocket. I promise you now. <laughs> Sounds it's cost familiar. me a fortune this tour. It's cost me a fortune. Sounds very familiar. Sounds very familiar. Thank you so much, Ray, for chatting with us, nice and all the best. I'll get you out this summer before you start yeah, melting. Of